If you know anything about speedrunning the original Super Mario Bros., you know it's one of the most optimized games out there. Opportunities for new tricks and time saves are few and far between, so runners are willing to do just about anything to save time, even if it requires a slew of frame-perfect tricks to pull off. The same is true for speedrunning the sequel to this game, Super Mario Bros. 2. And a quick side note, I am of course referring to the Japanese Mario 2, also known as The Lost Levels, which is a direct sequel to the first game with very similar gameplay. If you didn't know that Mario 2 was a different game in Japan than the rest of the world, or even if you did, you probably have all sorts of misconceptions about both of these games. I can't get into it right now because that would require its own separate video, and I will in fact make a video about that in the future, so make sure you subscribe and look forward to that. Anyway, this game is highly optimized like its predecessor, and has the same frame rule system between levels. Runners do a bunch of crazy tricks to squeeze out whatever time is possible to save. Often this means several frame perfect inputs just to save a third of a second. So, in a game where saving a third of a second is a big deal, what if I told you the newest trick in this game saves 1.75 seconds? In a lot of games, that's not a huge amount of time, but in a lot of games it is. Even Mario 64 120 star runners lose their minds over new tricks that save this much time. So in a game like Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels, this is a huge deal. Let's take a look at the newest skip in Retro Mario speedrunning. This video is sponsored by BuildBox, which is software for developing games, and it requires no previous coding or experience to get started. In fact, BuildBox was used to make several of the top 100 games on the App Store. With it, you can make games from all different genres and in 2D and 3D. There's three main tools BuildBox offers you to make it easy to make games. First, there's the Game Wizard, which gets you on board and teaches you how to create your first game. It also comes with the template and asset libraries, which you can pull from to have assets to work with and professional looking animations. And there's also the BuildBox shop where you can get everything you need to finish your game, including 2D and 3D assets and UI elements. This game right here is called Night Fighter 2, and it's a good example of what you can do with BuildBox. It was made completely from scratch in just a few weeks. If this is looking interesting to you, getting started on BuildBox is completely free. There's BuildBox Classic, which is easiest to use and lets you make 2D games, and then there's BuildBox 3, which lets you make 2D and 3D games. After you make a game, you can subscribe to BuildBox Plus and Pro plans to publish your app and then make money from it. If you want to try making a game yourself, download BuildBox and start now by clicking the link in the video description. Alright, to explain the new time save, we need to talk about fire bars. For the majority of enemies in these games, even if they have random patterns, you can usually react to them and get past without losing any time. Firebars are a different story though, sometimes they're totally in the way and you can't do anything about it. Or can you? NES games are, you know, a little quirky sometimes, and the original Mario is no exception. When enemies load in this game, they can inherit some attributes from enemies that were previously on screen. Let me show you some examples so you can see what I mean. Here in 6-1 of the Lost Levels, there's a Hammer Brother followed by two Paracoopas. This second Koopa gets influenced by the Hammer Bro that's just before them. If we don't do anything special and just leave the Hammer Bro alone, this Koopa will be in kind of an annoying spot to get past. It's doable, it's nothing crazy, but it can easily trip you up. Now if we go ahead and kill this Hammer Bro on our way in, you'll see that the Koopa is lower and a lot easier to jump past. Taking it even further, if we break this block so the hammer row falls down through the gap, you can see the Koopa goes a different direction entirely, and we can just run right under it. That's one good example of how enemies or objects in levels can be affected by what comes earlier in the level. There's all sorts of other examples, but let's focus on fire bars before I go off on any other tangents. Let's look at this fire bar in 6-4. It is right in the way. If you watch some older runs, you'll see them waited out before proceeding, but in more modern runs, they're able to sneak past here. What's the difference? Firebars are no exception to this weird inheritance phenomenon we've been talking about. Sometimes their position becomes totally different, and it's based on things like the height of the potaboos that jumped earlier in the level. One example that's a lot easier to pick up on is when firebars are affected by firebars that came before them. Oftentimes, a firebar will appear in the exact spot that a previous firebar left off. Runners took notice of this in level 5-4. They realized that if they slowed down a little bit in this hallway to let this firebar turn more, then the big fire bar right afterwards would be easier to get past. Then one day it dawned on us to try the same thing out in 6-4. And sure enough, if you let this fire bar rotate more before it goes off screen, then you'll be able to avoid waiting on the big one. I love situations like these where you really don't have any idea what a runner is truly doing just by watching the run. It can seem like they're slowing down for no reason or going out of their way to do something that makes no sense or seems like it wastes time, but really it's all calculated to save time in the end. Alright, now that I spent all that time talking about how you can manipulate firebars, let's talk about a firebar that you can't manipulate. This one right here, at the very beginning of 6-4. This level has two big bars causing us trouble. This one is totally in the way, and there's actually nothing we can do about that. 
Right now, you're probably thinking that we should just go over the top of it, but let me share another one of those moments where a speedrunner does something that looks weird and slow, but actually saves time. The speedrun strat here isn't to take the top path or the bottom path, it's both? This stage is one of those maze castles where you have to take certain paths or else it'll just loop infinitely. These pop up here and there throughout the Mario series. Here at the start of 6-4, the correct path to go is the bottom path, but it turns out it's slightly faster to go halfway through the bottom path, trigger the checkpoint so the game thinks you went through there, and then double back and go over the top so you get past the fire bar sooner. All of that work and precision saves a whopping 0.35 seconds. Oh baby. If only we didn't have to go up top at all though, and we could just somehow go straight through the bottom path. That would be 1.75 seconds faster. Seems like a familiar number. Let's go take a look at what the task does here. Well, it's apparently possible to go straight through the fire bar, but how? Just like a lot of wall clips, the goal is to be on one side of it on one frame and on the other side on the next frame. If we let the fire bar make a full rotation, we can see some gaps. The positioning is very precise and it will require frame perfect inputs, but it's possible to fit Mario precisely into some of those gaps. I'll tell you what, Nintendo tried their darndest to prevent this from happening though and made it extra hard on us. Every other enemy in the game can only damage Mario every two frames. Because of this, it's possible to constantly enter and exit an enemy's hitbox and never even take damage. Even Mario's fireballs that he shoots can only hit enemies every two frames. Firebars though, they're just built different. To my knowledge, firebars are the only thing in the game that can damage you every frame. It's possible this was because it was way too easy to go through them otherwise, but even so, it's still possible, just barely. The end of last year was the first time this sort of thing started to be done in real-time runs. A setup was found to go through this one in level D-4. You're small Mario in that category though, which does make things a bit easier. The D-4 firebar skip didn't instantly make people think you could do it in 6-4, because as big Mario, you have to, like, push down and stuff. <laughs> but last month, a discussion about 6-4 firebar skip kicked up. Could we find a setup to get past the bar? Would there be a good way to do it as big Mario? Would it be viable for runs? Well, just a few hours later, So there you have it, the newest time save in Retro Mario speedrunning. It came about the same way new tricks usually do in these games. One day we just decided we're going to do what the task does. Runners aren't immediately incorporating this into runs because while it is absolutely doable, it's not free by any means and there are still some tricks to add into the world record before it. But soon we will see this in runs and a time that would have been ludicrous just a few months ago is now looking totally possible. Thanks for watching. If you want to see the next world record for this game happen live, the top three runners of this game are all very active right now. GTA has the current world record of 2119, and Scalpel and I are right behind and getting record pace runs all the time. Follow these streams to keep up on the action.